Hey, it's Stuart Robertson, CEO of ShareBuilder 401k, and continue on that journey to talk about personal money, your budget. How do you think about how much to put into savings, in particular in this segment? We've talked about, and go back and check it out if you haven't, how to think about budgeting, how 50% of your budget of your earnings might go towards the things you need, like housing and food and those sort of things, how 30% goes into things you might want, and how 20% goes towards saving. So today we're going to talk about that 20% bucket, the saving bucket, and then how do you prioritize some of these things to get yourself in position to have that 50, 30, 20? Because it just doesn't necessarily happen overnight when you look at your budget. So, um, so let's think about saving. Savings fall into three areas. Your short-term needs. So you have enough to handle your appliance breaks down or you have enough, your computer. Whatever those things might be that you have enough money to go take care of those things and they came up. Um, so that's your short term. You usually want to think about putting that into a savings account, something, uh, look for with a high interest rate. Many times they do have horrible interest rates. So look for something that you can get out there and you can have fast access to that money when you need it. Um, next is your midterm uh, type of savings. Uh, so you might be thinking about buying a car in the next three to five years. You might be thinking about, um, helping one of your children uh, with college payments in maybe five to 10 years, so you're not a 529 account. Whatever those things are, that's your midterm. Generally, you're gonna want some of that in a savings account, something you have fast access to. And if you are a little more risk tolerant, so you're okay with maybe that money not gaining in value or getting any interest, you might try some in an investing account or a 529 account. And then you have your long-term savings, your retirement. So how are you gonna do that? Um, so that's your IRA, that's your 401k that you would leverage for something like that. So it has a tax advantage incentive for you to keep that money and hold on to it and save for the long term. Um, in general, you want to think about 10 to 15 percent of your earnings going towards retirement. So those other buckets are smaller. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, let's talk about priorities of your budget. So. Again, catch up on the last uh, vlog and video if you haven't already about how to think about debt. But let's let's think about all those things you need to do to get into that ideal 50, 30, 20 budget. And the first one is you actually got to sit down and grab the last two, three months of statements and look at all your expenses and all your revenue and bucket all those things in the 50, 30, 20 so you know where you're off and what things might you be able to adjust to work towards that most people aren't going to fall magically into that. They're going to have to do some hard work and make some hard decisions to do that. But if you don't know where you are, then you can't actually make those moves. Um, and like I said in the last video and um, blogs on our site, sharebuilder41k.com, you can actually dive in and there's more information on how to, how to break that apart so you need to do a good job of, of, of understanding where your money's going. Number two, so you've done that hard work, but maybe as you're doing that, is you need to have at least $1,000 in a savings account. And if you don't, you need to build towards it. And the reason that is, is that I think over 50% of Americans have some sort of financial shock every year. So an appliance breaks, uh, extra health need, whatever things are, if you don't have 1000 to 2000 bucks saved up, you're already jumping into credit card, which as we talked about, those kind of interest rates and debt, is, it can be really spiraling you into trouble. So get at least enough to handle those sort of financial shocks. Then number three, if you got credit card debt, let's dive into paying that off and use those strategies we talked about earlier. Four, number four, there are seven priorities here. Take advantage, if, you're, if you have a 401k at your office, at your employment, take advantage of it. Start saving in it. Um, if you can't save 10% of your earnings today or 15%, do enough to try to get the company match if your company offers one. If not, maybe you start at 5% and every time you get a raise, you move it up 1% or 2% so it fits within your budget. Um, number five, let's start building a short-term savings amount that equals three to six months of your earnings. This really allows you to handle more than a financial shock job loss, um, a sudden need, um, 
be part of how you're saving up for that bigger purchase. All those sort of things can go into, for, for a bigger purchase like a car or, or a house down the road, all those things can go towards that three to six months of savings that you need in short term. Um, actually, as you get uh, older and earn more, say you're in your 50s and 60s, you might think about nine months. Um, just, you know, typically the more you earn, the higher you are in an organization, the longer time it takes to um, get reemployed at your current salary. So uh, those, are, those are things to think about. Number six, if you're thinking about buying a home or condo, or you are, or you already have one, think about when would you be done with mortgage payments? And will that be at the time you retire? If not, how can you organize it so that is so? Uh, you, could write, you could refinance, you could plan on downsizing as you get closer to retirement. Any of those sort of things would allow you to be in a good shape where you're not dealing with a pretty major payment as you hit retirement, which gives you greater freedom to enjoy the things you wanna enjoy in retirement. Uh, number seven, you still got extra money. Congratulations. You looked at your 50, 30, 20. Maybe you're in such a, in such a great place. You've got 45, 30% going to savings or just have a lot of money sitting around. Love to be in, everyone would love to be in your shoes. Um, that is the time to think about where do you want to put that money? You might want to have fun in a retail investing account with, um, you know, index funds, uh, you know, as a prudent way, or, you know, we always say if you have extra money, put 90% of it into you know, a prudent strategy around asset allocation and using index funds and those sort of things. And 10% you might want to play with, like uh, you have some, some companies you want to follow. You can think about it that way. Um, make sure your 529 is, is fully um, invested in for your kids when they hit college, those sort of things you can think about. Or reward yourself. Congratulations, you've got a lot of money saved up. Um, go, go have fun with that stuff uh, on a one-time purchase or a fun trip or something. So anyway, those are the big seven priorities. Hopefully that helps. I really think if you if you look at the last few blogs or the last video and you think about getting that framework for budgeting, getting that framework around what is good debt and bad debt, and then this one around how much do you need to be saving and how do you prioritize those things to get yourself into a strong financial position so that you spend your time enjoying your life and not worrying about money, um, putting that money to work for you uh, hopefully this helps you, and I'm really wishing you well and uh, financial freedom uh, quickly for you. Take care. Bye now.